The purpose of this film is to decode and desensationalize this particular aspect of the Third Reich mysticism or Nazi occultism. In my own book, Valpurgis Night, I try to tackle this from the point of view of someone who has a familiarity with the occult and see what stuck and what didn't stick from the actual history of the period leading up to 1933. This included social and cultural developments within Germany as a whole and also how it impacted upon and was ultimately capitalized by the rise of the National Socialist Workers' Party, who saw the fertile ground created by the Volkisch and the von der Vogel movements as a foundation on which they could build their own possible religion, but it was really an opportunist tactic more than a sincere one, except for perhaps Heinrich Himmler and the inner core of the SS. Standing above the Alma Valley in north-central Germany is the imposing and picturesque castle at Wielesburg. Long before Heinrich Himmler chose it as the supernatural citadel of the SS, the castle itself had played a pivotal role in the horrors of the past. In the 17th century, as religious mass hysteria and political turmoil swept across Europe, the dungeons at Wielesburg Castle were filled with the screams and anguish of those condemned as witches. Although some were witches, most would not have been. They would have been handy scapegoats for the political and religious agendas of the time. So the ironic choice of a building that was used by the Abrahamics as a slaughterhouse for those who had kept the last remnants of the old folk religion and customs alive, being selected by Heinrich Himmler as the central focal point in his personal war against Christianity is a telling one indeed. Himmler, it is said, chose Wielesburg primarily due to its location in the heart of Westphalia, among the mythical landscape of Hermann and the Wunderkind, the last of the pagan Saxon kings to oppose the Christians. Himmler was especially drawn to the very real magical intensity of the North Tower. So it was on the 3rd of November in 1933, after looking at three other sites, that Himmler chose Wielesburg as the magical citadel of the SS. Although the castle itself dates from the early 1600s, human occupation of the site goes back to the Neanderthal era. The hilltop at Wiebelsburg also appears to have been an important ceremonial location during the Bronze Age. The surrounding location in and around Wiebelsburg would have also been an important factor in winning Himmler's favour. On the outskirts of the once vast Teutonburg forest, which was the most northern frontier of the Roman Empire. It was here that the Roman legions suffered an enormous defeat by the Germanic tribes. The Eckensteiner rock formation, which I've shown in another recent video, so beloved of the Germanic pagan revivalists, is also not far from Wielesburg. Himmler himself, the SS is a kind of knightly order of elite warriors infused with supernatural powers which was connected to the level of Germanic blood flowing in their veins, although it should be pointed out that black, Arabic and Asian troops also served different points in the SS. Nevertheless, the favoritism was granted to the SS members who were more of the purest Aryan stock. However, the reasons for this is more esoteric than racial in nature when one begins to examine the story in depth. There was a belief that pure Aryan blood, when bred together and brought back to its full purity, would release the Vrilya, a Germanic or Aryan magical race living inside of the earth. That the Vrilya would then become manifest upon the planet and restore Aryan virtue. And this is the main reason why pure Aryans within the SS were encouraged to breed. It was purely supernatural more than racial. The SS themselves were designed to be an internal security force during peacetime, as well as then becoming an elite, highly trained and disciplined military force during war. The common denominator which bond most of the SS members together was a hatred of the Bolsheviks. Even so, on top of all this, Himmler wanted the SS to be a spiritual force in the guise of the Teutonic Knights and one that would liberate Europe not only from communism but also from Christianity. 
At the core of this pagan revival was the restoration of pagan holidays and festivals. The idea had already become popular among many Germans who were involved in the Volkish movements. The revival and usage of runes played a pivotal role with the SS. Again, this magical script was seen as a means of dechristianizing on a psychological and cognitive level party members, as well as the regular SS rank and file. SS officers were also encouraged to have pagan wedding ceremonies. Children of the SS party were baptized, to use that term, by being placed in a cradle of oak leaves during the spring with the rune of life placed next to the infant or carved onto their crib. There was also something of a contradiction in terms of the desire to revive a purely Germanic paganism, as among the Third Reich elite themselves, classical paganism was generally preferred in terms of the artwork, the overall aesthetic, as well as the intellectual and cultural influences it carried within itself. All we have to do is look at the artwork and public architecture styles proposed by the Third Reich elite. This should not be surprising as Wielersburg itself is located in a landscape where both the German pagan gods as well as Roman pagan gods were equally venerated in the past. Having myself visited and spent time alone in the North Tower crypt at Wielersburg, I can personally vouch for this presence of the classical pagan gods, and in particular Lucifer on this site. I have come to believe that a Roman temple devoted to Lucifer or his sister Diana or mother Aurora once stood upon this hill, while the woods around the castle at Wielersburg would have been a natural home for Lucifer's sister Diana, the goddess of the hunt. It is this hybridization of Germanic and classical paganism which is the most overlooked elements of a kind of a class system arose whereby the rustic Germanic paganism was for the rural and working class urban Germans, while a more Greco-Roman classical paganism was set aside and being adopted for the urban professionals and upper echelons of the Third Reich society. Albert Speer, Hitler's armaments minister, drew up plans for the reconstruction of Berlin into a new Roman-style city to be known as Germania. Even the Latinized name for the new city tells us so much about just what type of paganism was being planned for Europe by the elites. In many ways the overall vision of Himmler's eventual plans for Wielersburg can be seen as a test run for Albert Speer's Germania. Wielersburg was to expand and evolve. There were plans to swallow up the village below the castle. Among the development for the eventual Wielersberg complex was the construction of a planetarium and most fascinating of all, a Fort Knox style vault to function akin to a medieval keep so as to store within the mystical environment the treasures of the SS. After several years of rebuilding, using inmates, mostly Jehovah Witnesses, from an adjacent concentration camp. Work on Wielersburg ceased in winter 1944, when the tide of war had turned. It was at this point that attempts were made to blow the castle up, and apparently this failed, leading many to believe that the building, and in particular the North Tower, had supernatural qualities. Having had the better part of a day, to explore the North Tower's different levels on my own in January 2019. I came to the conclusion that Wielersburg is indeed a very mystical and magical location. But strangely enough, I didn't feel any particular resonance in terms of anything overly evil or even particularly Germanic. The feeling was of something completely new, and perhaps this is what Himmler was really attempting. Much has been made of the so-called Black Sun motif on the floor above the crypt in the meeting room where the large table once stood. Although it is known as the Black Sun, there is very little information on this particular motif. 
In fact, it doesn't seem to have existed before the rise of Velisberg and, and any similar objects and devices I have found connected to it originate from Velisberg and don't seem to have come from anywhere else. More importantly, the so-called Black Sun motif isn't black, it's green. It's green inlaid marble. Someone just looked at it and called it a Black Sun and that's how the name stuck. There is no esoteric, cultural or any other form of spiritual underpinning to suggest that that is a black sun. It is a green wheel. This struck me on two levels. It has two particular aspects. One, it's a wheel representing similar ideas as the wheel you find in Buddhism, the wheels you find in Hinduism and of course the swastika, the hammers of Thor in motion and so on the circle of life, Shiva at the center of the cosmic wheel, creating and destroying. But the fact that it's also green marble is especially intriguing. As far as I'm concerned, it's a tree and you're looking at the branches from above and this is why it's green, to suggest the fertility. You stand above a tree and you look down, this could be seen as a stylized version of that. And what makes me believe this even more, that we're dealing with some kind of symbolism relating to Votan's oak, or Thunar's oak, or the Yggdrasil tree, or the sacred trees of the Celtic pagan tribes, is directly underneath this object is the swastika embedded in the ceiling of the crypt. Now this shows a level of sophistication in terms of esoteric and symbolism usage that goes far beyond the Nazis and the Third Reich mystics being a bunch of idiots. These people had a profound understanding of human psychology and spiritual depth and archetypes just as much as anyone else and they knew exactly what they were doing. Most of the stories you've heard about this crypt and Velisberg as a whole has been sensationalism put out there by the likes of the History Channel and other dubious sources. I'm here to tell you right now that the North Tower at Velisburg Castle is absolutely a very spiritual location. I don't care if it's connected to Third Reich mysticism and the evils that was unleashed by that. I'm stating a fact, not a political opinion here. I felt an incredible spiritual charge, particularly in the crypt. At the center of the crypt is what they said was would be a burning flame fed by a gas pipe. Now if you look down on the floor there is a pipe, but I don't believe that's a gas pipe. And standing back further from this, what you see is a pool. I believe that was a ceremonial pool and the pipe was what fed it with water. This was an underground body of water directly beneath the swastika roots of a symbolized version of the European sacred tree. What are we looking at here? I believe we're looking at Mirmir's well, as told in the Norse and Nordic sagas, where Odin went down to retrieve the secrets of the runes and I believe that that's what ultimately happened here. I believe there was a ceremony involved runes either teaching people about them or going down there to collect some kind of proficiency qualification about them or some kind of spiritual event and every SS member that descended down into the crypt was invoking Odin although I don't feel that Odin lives there now but that seems to be what they have attempted. If anything like what we've seen what happened at Notre Dame and Vulcan is that the Third Reich mystics of the SS probably unleashed Lucifer or Diana from the original Roman temple that was stood even below the North Tower, below that of the ceremonial fountain. Even so, what are we looking at? Very sophisticated approaches to spirituality. The world of men and the world of the material needs takes place in the meeting room above where plans would be made, practical matters would be set about. However, below this was the subconscious world down in the crypt of the North Tower. So in many ways, the North Tower at Velisburg can be looked upon as both a representation of the Nordic sagas in terms of Odin's journey into enlightenment, also as a symbolism of the state of man. The man of practicalities and everyday material living on the surface and below that the spiritual identity and mysteries which drives the forces of the daily world unconsciously. And below that again the unleashing of the pagan Roman archetypes that probably were placed there by the Romans 2000 years ago. Possibly a temple devoted to Lucifer, Diana or Aurora 
but very much that's the feeling I got when I was down there. Vilesburg Castle will always be a remarkable place and has been kept that way for that reason. It wasn't blown up, it wasn't demolished. There's something deeper there and if we explore the spiritual nature of such places, regardless of the political associations connected to them, they can open up in ways and reveal many different hidden aspects of how spirituality functions, misfunctions and connects us in different ways way, way more.